So the first feature we're going to start with today is a semi-resistant scaling. I believe you might be aware about this feature. It's a very simple one, which is again, mainly used to reduce a BDCH congestion, like to have a BDCH capacity enhancement in general, and particularly to use in high load scenarios. So let's first like try to recall what was the normal scheduling in the Volti. If you remember the Volti packets is being transmitted every 20 millisecond. So you will have the BDCH allocation or BDCH grant will be allocated every 20 millisecond year and accordingly you will have uh, the, the your brbs or resource blocks and the mcs or the scheduling part being allocated to the user every 20 millisecond based on the bdch location so and bdch grant allocation so you can see for example in this particular uh, scenario we are assuming that this for vertical user users being moved so they having a different trading condition so the inward b is scheduling different location of the resource blocks for example here as you can see here and also assuming you have a different mcs so the resources being changed as you can see here while in the semi resistance scheduling what it will do in, in order to save the bdch like to improve or reduce the issue condition it will do the bdch allocation only one time in the, the beginning of the call for example it will allocate the bdch and this is bdch will have the grant it will have information about again the bdch resources or bdch uh, resource blocks and mcs as well migration scheme so, but in this case, it would be fixed allocation. For example, it will have a fixed number of resource blocks with fixed location and also a fixed MCS. Let's assume, for example, MCS 15 or 14 or whatever. So the same resources and location for BRBs and MCS would be used all over the call. So this is, means that every 20 milliseconds, there will be no need to having allocation for BDCH resources. So this is will save the BDCH and will have a great improvement, a great improvement in the BCH allocation. As you can see here, while but the main main point here, which is might results in some drawbacks, that the allocation or the scheduling information for the MCS and, and BRBs will keep will will be will be the same all over the call. And this is, for example, might cause a problems. If, for example, if you're assuming in the high uh, uh, high speed scenarios, whenever the user is moving with high speed and there is a high variation in radio condition, so this is might cause a problem, if, especially if the user moved, for example, from a good radio condition area to a poor radio condition. So this might increase the silent calls or even the drop, drops or, or packet loss or whatever. For example, also in the scenarios where the user is moving from outdoor scenario to indoor scenario, so this can also cause a problem. So usually like this is a scenario based feature. You can just enable a very particular part Particular scenarios whenever you have a very high congestion of BCH and also for the scenarios where you are not expecting a lot of variation in the radio condition. For example, let's assume you have indoor, have one site, IBS site or indoor sites where you know that the area is very well covered. So for example, you can enable the feature for the site. This is just an example for sure. Every network will have a different uh, behavior, but I'm just giving you some ideas about it. And in general, there is some requisite for this feature. For sure, the user support, support supposed to support Volti plus there is the user support, support the feature itself, which is called semi business scheduling. And in the next slide, I will explain how how you can get the information whether the user is is, is supporting the feature or not. And for sure that the ABC or the core network is supposed to support the IMS in general, IMS based voice services. And here there is from the scheduling information, the normal scheduling here that initially will have a year at PCI one. And then you will have the BCH allocation. For example, this is BH grant or order one. And every 20 milliseconds, there will be allocation for BCH uh, allocation. Uh, uh, DCI information for example being sent with search order one or the two or three. While here for the whenever the semi resistance scheduling, initially there will be a rough setup QCI one and the SPS will be configured to this particular user. Then it will be activated through only one uh, BDCH activation during the talk support or during the, the call in general. Once the user, the call being released, the, uh, the BDCH or the SPS will be deactivated through again sending a DCI from NDB to the UE. So this is in general about the feature. Now let's move to the next part about how to check the capability of this feature. So as you can see here, for example, this is how this is explaining how you can check the capability, uh, SPS capability, whether the user supporting the semi business schedule or not. For example, if you look into this figure, this is from the U capability information message. Like whenever the, in, in 4G, you have U capability information being sent. 
So you'll find under the capability message, you can just go UE capability information, then you'll find UE, UE track capability, then under RF parameters, you'll find something called FGI or feature group indicators. And this is one of the very important messages to know about it, especially for the UE capability. As you can see, it's like consisting of 32 bits. Each bit of those is like indicating a, a particular feature, whether this feature is being supported or not. In the next slide, I'll give some information about it and I will attach the details about each of these bits, the explanation or definition in the video description. So for example, the bit, bit number 29 here, this is showing whether the user is supporting the SPS semi-resistance scheduling feature or not. For example, if this bit is one, this means it's supporting, if zero means it doesn't, it does not support. So this is like simply what to do. The next part here, actually, it's about whenever the user, uh, the end would be configured the e with SPS. This is the configuration of the activation. The configuration would be done through the layer three while the activation would be done through the DCI information. So for example, here, this is RL serial configuration message being sent at any time. It will have this SPS configuration downlink information or even uplink. And if you'd like to get more details about this, this part, you can refer to this below link, link it having very good information as well if you would like to go for more details about it. Um, so yeah, so now let's move to the part related to the FGI feature to get more explanation about it. Okay, this is just like I quoted this table from 3GBP TS36.331. This one, you can, you can see this is like showing the table for all the bits and under the FGI or feature group indicator, which each one of those bits like giving explanation or like addressing whether this bit supporting or related to which feature. For example, if you look into this bit 28, it's just showing to you TTI bundling. For example, if bit 28 is one, this means a user supporting TTI bundling feature. If it's zero, this means it does not support. Same for 29 for the semi-resistance scheduling and same for the handover part. And again, I will attach the video description, the complete explanation for the 32 bits, because here I give some examples in the video description just for your reference in case if you need it for any other use.